Hey guys, Adam here. And in this video, I'm gonna help you become a better digital marketer by showing you some of the most important things you need to know about digital marketing right now. You see, digital marketing has been made to seem way more complicated than it actually is. That's a shame really, because it's actually pretty straightforward. That said, if you do want to get the best results possible from your digital marketing, you're going to need to know and understand the strategies that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this episode. So my promise to you is this, if you watch this entire video, you will be a better digital marketer at the end. So let's get to it. So the very first thing that I need to share with you are the differences between digital marketing and traditional marketing. Brace yourself for this one, because it's pretty profound. Actually, it's not profound at all, and that's what makes it so interesting. You see, digital marketing is really just marketing done through the use of digital channels. That's it. So when we're talking about digital marketing, well, we're talking about marketing through the use of channels like SEO or search engine optimization, social media, uh, pay-per-click ads or online Facebook ads, Instagram ads, or anything like that. Not to mention email marketing or website optimization or anything that really takes place online or through the use of digital media. You can contrast this with traditional marketing using traditional media, things like TV or the radio or newspapers or magazines or billboards, basically anything not digital. Now here's the deal. Traditional marketing and traditional advertising and everything that goes into it, well, it still works, but there are some significant advantages to using digital marketing and all the digital channels that we now have available. First of all, digital marketing tends to give you a much larger audience size. Really, you can reach anybody that's online and there's billions and billions of people online. Next is audience targeting because not only are you able to reach these billions of people, well, you don't wanna reach all of them because all of them are not going to be the perfect fit for your business. Rather Rather, you can be laser focused and selective on only the most ideal and perfect people that you want to target. Digital marketing also tends to be significantly more cost effective than running, say, an ad in the New York Times or, heaven forbid, a Super Bowl commercial. Again, these are designed to appeal to mass markets and to try to reach everyone. Probably not your goal. Rather, what you want to do is be laser focused and selective with your marketing and reach again only those people most likely to buy. Digital marketing also allows you to get immediate feedback and this is probably one of my favorite benefits of the channels. After all, if you think about running say a magazine ad where you've got to think of the copy and the creative and what you're going to say and then you've got to get it all written up and sent to the magazine, it's got to get published and then distributed. Well, you could be looking at weeks at best, months and maybe many, many months before you ever figure out if this worked or not. Digital marketing, on the other hand, well, in theory, you can write an ad and have it online in a matter of minutes. Immediate feedback, immediate correction, immediate results. Plus, digital marketing tends to be a whole lot easier to measure and to track because everything's digital, which means we've got a digital trail allowing us to measure costs and results and everything in real time so we can make adjustments and tweaks and optimizations on the fly. Again, contrast that with waiting three months for your magazine to come out and figure out if things worked or not. And you can't measure clicks on a magazine, so the best you can hope to do is, well, really either have them fill out some kind of a form on the magazine or visit a digital channel, which ties us back into digital marketing. Anyway, there's obviously some serious advantages here to choosing digital channels, going with digital marketing. But again, that's not to say that traditional marketing doesn't still work. It does. The point here is to take a look at either traditional or digital marketing and then sort of take a few steps back to the strategies and the fundamentals and the principles, the consumer psychology, the buyer behavior, why people do the things they do, and then focus on mastering and learning that. Then you can apply that to digital channels or traditional channels or any other channels that come out in the future. All right, the next thing that'll really help you become a better digital marketer is to understand the differences between strategy and tactics and when to use them. Strategy is all the big picture stuff. And this is really where you wanna focus your efforts first and foremost, because this is the foundation that all of your future marketing efforts and tactics and tools and software and things like that are gonna be built on. Get this part wrong and nothing else matters because nothing else will work. Now, there are a ton of different strategies and approaches and ways to look at your digital marketing, but pretty much no matter how you look at it, it always comes back to four basic and really solid principles that have stood the test of time and are gonna be just as relevant today as they are 100 years from now. I call these things the core four, and they make up the center of my hub and spoke model of marketing. The core four are made up of model, market, message, and media. 
So let's unpack those now. The model is essentially your business, your offer, your package, your servicing, the pricing that goes with it, how you deliver whatever it is that you deliver to the market. It's important here to design your model, design your business around what is the most enjoyable and profitable and in demand by the market. Because the worst thing you can do is build a business that you absolutely hate. Next is the market. These are the people that you're going to serve. And you don't wanna say everyone or anyone with money, you wanna be focused laser focused on exactly who is going to get the best results from your product or service and also the market that you're going to most enjoy serving. In marketing, we call this an ideal customer avatar or an ideal client avatar. And it's made up of demographic details like age, gender, income, occupation, geographic details like what city or state or province or country they live in, and psychographic details like what are their values, their attitudes, and their lifestyles. Next is your message. And here's where you're going to clarify and connect with your ideal target market by speaking directly to them about their pains and their problems and their frustrations and how your business is uniquely positioned to help solve that for them. Telling stories about previous customers and previous client results is an incredibly effective way to do this, as are getting testimonials directly from them and running case studies proving that you know what you're talking about and have done what you say you're going to do. I think that made sense. The point here is that to craft truly effective messages, well, you've got to understand who your market is and what really makes them up and what makes them do the things they do. So a little bit of market research and having a few chats with your customers never hurts. And the fourth part of the core four, and again, the center of that hub and spoke model of marketing is all about media. And this is where you're going to go, where you're going to do your marketing, which digital channels you're gonna choose. Most businesses do this completely backwards. They start with the media by hearing a great thing about Facebook ads or YouTube marketing, or maybe starting a podcast, and then they just rush in there, forgetting all about the message and the market and the model. So unsurprisingly, well, they're building their business and they're building their marketing on a pretty sketchy foundation. This is why if you go through the steps in the right order, starting with the model, moving on to the market, identifying the message, by the time you get to media, the choices should be evidently clear, like crystal clear. You should know exactly where your ideal target market is present and active online. And this is going to enable you to go there and ignore everything else. The reality is you don't need to do everything. You don't need to be everywhere. You just need to be the place Places where your ideal target market are present and active. This is gonna save you a ton of time and money and headache and wasted energy by spreading yourself too thin on channels that simply aren't gonna deliver results. All right, so that was the strategy, the core four, the high level stuff that goes into making the right decisions. Tactics, on the other hand, are how you're going to execute everything I've just talked about. The tactics are the details and the actionable steps or executable things that you're actually going to go and put into practice. So the strategy being the business model you're using, the market that you're going to go after, the messages you're going to use, and the media choices that you're going to deploy your marketing on, and then the tactics being things like what frequency are you gonna post, and what kind of content are you gonna post, and what schedule or level of consistency, or how many memes are you gonna throw in? A tactical question would be, what's the best time to post on social media? A strategic question would be, which social media platform should we be on? That's the difference. All right, the next thing that you need to know about digital marketing is the difference between organic and paid. So let's start with organic. Organic content and organic digital marketing is essentially anything that you create for free. So anytime that you make a post on Facebook or an Instagram story or a YouTube video or anything like that, and you're not paying money to have it promoted, you're creating organic content. Now this doesn't mean that it's free content because odds are good you put time and energy and probably a decent amount of money behind the content that you're creating. But by not paying to promote it, it's still classified as organic content. So if organic marketing is putting out content and not paying to have it promoted, well then paid marketing is the opposite of that. Putting out content and then paying the networks to promote it and distribute it to even more people. Basically with paid media or paid marketing, paid ads, you're running advertising to whatever message or whatever content that you're putting out there. Now, the big players in the space right now are obviously the kingpins like Facebook ads and Instagram ads and YouTube ads LinkedIn ads and Google ads, essentially the major networks with ads added to the back of their name. Organic content shows up in the news feeds of people that follow you, 
Whereas with paid marketing and paid media, it shows up in the news feeds and on the phones and on the devices of the people that you choose through targeting. Now, of course, like all marketing strategies, there's pros and cons to both. Organic is free essentially in nature, but it's going to be a little more limited in reach because the way the algorithms work is they kind of favor paid media because they like to make money. Paid media, on the other hand, has the obvious downside of costing money. On the bright side, it allows you to reach a ton of people very quickly. So essentially, the choice between organic and paid comes down to time versus money, but also the rate at which you want to experience results. All right, now let's talk about one of my favorite topics in all of marketing, direct response versus brand awareness. Direct response marketing is, unsurprisingly, direct in its goal to get a response. Man, marketing sure isn't very creative sometimes. Basically, when you do direct response marketing, you're creating an ad or you're creating a piece of content and you're focused on getting an immediate and tangible return. Something like a lead or a sale or a phone call or a visit or a sign up or something like that. Direct response marketing would be run a Facebook ad, expect to generate a lead, send out an email, measure the number of conversions, promote a video, track how many people signed up for a free trial. All of these are direct response because you're expecting something ideally immediately and you're gonna be able to track and measure it so you can do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Now contrast all of that with brand awareness marketing, which is essentially more focused on longer term and building trust and authority and your brand name in the market. With direct response, we're measuring things like leads and sales and conversions. With brand awareness, we're measuring things like trust and authority and possibly mentions, but a lot harder to quantify and to measure because they're a lot more intangible. The reality is long-term to build a scalable and sustainable and profitable business, well, you do need a pretty decent mix of both direct response marketing and brand awareness marketing but you have to be wary of the cardinal sin of marketing. You see, one of the biggest mistakes in all of marketing is running brand awareness marketing campaigns and expecting direct response results. This is a recipe for failure and one of the biggest reasons that many people claim their marketing just isn't working. It's because they're using the wrong tool for the job, like following a recipe to bake a cake and then getting really frustrated when it comes out like muffins or bread or anything that isn't cake. This is why it's incredibly important that you use the right recipe or strategy for the job. All right, another incredibly important thing you need to know about digital marketing is the difference between search and discovery marketing. When it comes to search versus discovery marketing, the biggest and most important, or keyword if you will, is intent. Basically, what's the intent or what is the reason that someone's using a specific platform when they log on in the morning or at noon or at night? So let's start with search. And here we're talking about platforms like Google and YouTube, and basically any other search engine. When someone logs on to Google, for example, well, they have intent. They're there to find an answer or a solution or a product. They're there to do something or buy something or learn something or take some kind of action. This is where you as a marketer want to show up in front of them and basically answer their question or give them the solution to whatever it is that they're looking for. Some strategies here are using SEO or search engine optimization, as well as Google ads, which is pay-per-click advertising. Discovery marketing, on the other hand, well, this encompasses brands like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube to a certain extent. Essentially, a user on these platforms may have intent, but they're probably more casually browsing. After all, nobody really shows up in the morning, logs onto Facebook or Instagram with a credit card in hand, looking to buy something. This is why if you're doing search marketing, well, you can afford to be direct. They're looking for something, you have the answer so you can just give it to them. With discovery marketing, on the other hand, you've gotta be a little more creative and a little more entertaining. You've gotta get their attention and then keep it and allow them to become interested in what it is that you're selling or promoting. Now, both search marketing and discovery marketing are incredibly important parts to building an overall successful and sustainable business. But just like with direct response marketing and brand awareness marketing, you wanna make sure that you're using the right tool for the right job at the right time in the right place. All right. Next, I've got something very important to share with you, and it's something that rarely gets talked about when it comes to marketing advice, and that is the difference between marketing products and marketing services. Here's the deal. Most of the marketing information out there, whether we're talking about textbooks or courses or even trainings, they revolve around the marketing of products. A product being something tangible that you can hold, that you can see, that you can touch, and that you can taste. A service, on the other hand, is intangible can't hold it, can't touch it, can't see it, 
you can't taste it. Plus, with services, you often need to pay in advance, which requires a whole new level of trust. This is why if you're marketing a service-based business and you try to market it like a product-based business, well, you're gonna be very disappointed. Now, when it comes to marketing products, you have the opportunity and the advantage of being able to explain and to show and to demonstrate how a product works what it looks like. You wanna show it in action, show the features, show the benefits that the features will deliver, show the story behind it, everything like that. Here's an example. Let's say that I'm trying to promote and sell this pen. Well, the fact that this pen has a lid is a feature. The fact that it will prevent me from getting ink all over myself, that's a benefit. But you can take it further and you probably should. For example, this pen lid also has a clip, which means that I can attach it to my papers or my notebook or even my clothes if I'm trying to sport that nerdy look. Another feature of the pen lid itself is the fact that the lid has holes in the top. You may be surprised to hear that the reason that pen lids have holes in the top is to prevent suffocation in case they accidentally or purposely get swallowed. After all, chewing on pen lids is an age old, albeit highly unsanitary practice. Sometimes you just get hungry. Services on the other hand, well, they don't have that advantage. So the main thing when you're promoting and marketing services is you want to sell the end, essentially the end state or the benefits or the outcome or the results that someone will experience after working with you. In fact, when it comes to marketing services, I'd go so far as to say it's pretty much all about the end state and the benefits and the outcomes and the results someone will experience. The key here is to highlight the current pain or dissatisfaction or discomfort of their current state. And then of course, paint the picture of how they'll be so much better after having worked with you. All right, the next thing you really need to be aware of if you want to become a true expert in digital marketing is to understand the differences between B2B and B2C marketing. B2B stands for business to business. And this is where your main customers, your main clients aren't regular everyday people, but rather other businesses. B2C on the other hand means you're a business that sells to consumers, regular everyday people and not businesses. B2B, business to business, B2C, business to consumer. And just like everything I've shared with you so far, there's some significant differences in the way that you wanna market your business, market your service, market your product, market whatever, depending on whether you're selling to businesses or people. And this is why the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is check out the video I have linked up right here on B2B versus B2C marketing. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in the next episode. Basically, B2B marketing typically focuses on fewer but larger customers and B2C marketing on more but smaller customers. This means for B2B type marketing, you're gonna have a little more incentive to put a little more punch behind your pitch because you're gonna to have to market to fewer customers. 